Do you want to be the very best like no one ever was? Then don't play Arcane Mage in Season 3. Instead, play one of the specs we'll be talking about today. We called up some of those sweaty nerds at the top of the ladder and asked them what to main in 9.2. And after everyone stopped talking about RMP, we decided to make a list just for you. So stay tuned to know what you should be maining in Season 3 for those sweet rating gains. Speaking of rating gains, we wanted to remind you of our rating gain guarantee at skillcap.com. That's right, if you don't gain at least 250 rating while using our website, we give you your money back. And for $4.99 a month, that is definitely a safe investment, especially since you gain access to over 600 premium instructional videos and an invite to the members only section of our Discord, where you can get the PvP help you need from our team of experts. So what are you waiting for? Learn more about our risk-free service in the links below. So let's kick things off with Melee and look at two classes that are safe picks for 9.2. The first is Rogue. Right now, all three specs are offering unique strengths in every format. Sub and Outlaw seem to be pulling ahead of the pack, but Assassin's Assassination is not far behind. So what makes each spec so good? Let's break it down. Sub continues to perform consistently well in RMP, where it is the backbone to the infamous 3-2-1 CC setups that make the comp so deadly. We're sure you already knew that. So what's the deal with Outlaw? This spec has cycled in and out of the meta since its inception, so why is it suddenly seeing a resurgence now? To answer this question, we have to step back and look at game balance as a whole. Since the introduction of tier sets and double legendaries in Season 3, damage is higher across the board for virtually every spec in the game. Higher damage means a need for more tankiness, which just happens to be the advantage Outlaw has over its other specs. Passively, Outlaw Rogues have significantly more health thanks to the Enduring Brawler PvP talent, which gives them an additional 20% stamina at maximum stacks. This is often paired with the Float Like a Butterfly PvP talent, which gives cooldown reduction on both Feint and Evasion with the Restless Blades passive, which just so happens to also decrease the cooldown on Vanish. And if that wasn't enough, Vanish will also get its cooldown lowered with the true bearing buff granted by Roll the Bones. And to top everything off, all cooldowns can be reduced even further thanks to the Shadow Dust Legendary. So what does this all mean? It means that Outlaw Rogues have much lower cooldowns on many of their core defensives compared to their other specs. All of this allows them to deal more consistent damage on offense since they are far more durable than their sub and assassination counterparts, while also having a lower cooldown on blind thanks to the Blinding Powder talent. In a meta where cooldown trading is king, having a shorter CD on blind and all major defensives is a massive advantage. Even if Outlaw gets nerfed, chances are that Sub or even Assassination can help take its place in different comps. Despite recent nerfs, Asa damage is still really good, especially with the Night Fae Priest, who offer cooldown reduction on Vendetta thanks to Fae Guardians. So really, there aren't any bad specs for Rogue in Season 3. Right now, each of them feels unique, which makes them an easy pick to main for 9.2. Joining rogues on our melee to main are Fury Warrior. You might be surprised by this choice, since arms warriors have been dominant throughout Shadowlands history, but after the insane nerf to arms defensive stance, which halved its damage reduction effect from 20% to 10%, it's easy to see why it would drop a couple of tiers. Luckily, its eager disciple Fury Warrior has come equipped to handle business and remind us that warriors aren't going anywhere. Fury has great self-healing and a defensive that's usable while stunned, which is obviously really good in a meta dictated by stuns. One thing that gets overlooked is that they have one of the highest health pools in the game thanks to the Titan's grip talent allowing them to wield two two-handed weapons. Arms Warriors may have lost their tankiness, but Fury Warriors are packing more than enough to survive the current meta. In addition, the Warpaint talent grants 10% reduced damage while Enrage is active without the 20% damage penalty attached to defensive stance. This is not to mention that Fury Warriors caught a huge W this patch with how insanely well their new tier set synergizes with their talents. Fury Warriors are extremely versatile when it comes to their playstyle, as they can specialize in control, uptime, or healing. Do you need to stick on your target no matter what? Pick Double Time, granting you two uses of charge. Need to heal yourself in a pinch? Impending Victory heals you for a massive 40% max HP. Or maybe you just need to keep that enemy sub rogue in check. Reach for Stormbolt, letting you stun a target for 4 seconds. I hear you saying Fury Warriors already had all these versatile options, so why the sudden rise in popularity? Well, with their new two-set bonus granting them an extra charge of Raging Blow, Fury Warriors are able to cast Rampage more than we have ever seen before. And we all know what more Rampage casts lead to, more damage. Combine this with their Slaughterhouse PvP talent and they can maintain a 40% healing reduction on their enemies for an absurd amount of time. With their four set, Fury Warriors have a chance to proc Recklessness, so the insanity just continues. This synergy 
synergizes perfectly with their Reckless Abandon talent, which grants them 50 Rage upon entering Recklessness, and an upgraded version of Raging Blow, Crushing Blow. If you kept up with your counting, that's up to 3 charges of a more deadly Raging Blow than Fury Warriors have at their disposal. So with Recklessness, 3 charges of Crushing Blow, a 40% healing reduction, and their insane damage buff from Conqueror's Banner granted from their go-to Covenant Necrolord, Fury Warriors have an insane amount of pressure that will surely make their foes, especially enemy healers, praying for arms to be back in the meta. Keeping all this in mind along with the flexibility of compositions that Fury Warriors enjoy, as well as possessing multiple viable covenants, it's easy to see why Fury Warriors have joined Rogue at the top of the ladder and would be a great class to main in 9.2. Moving on from melee, we have two casters with some alternative options. The obvious pick here is Fire Mage. Once again, this really shouldn't come as any surprise as they might be the most versatile caster on the roster. They continue to shine in 3v3 where RMP is still the best comp in the game for Season 3. The control Fire Mages offer in this setup is unmatched, and the variable cooldown on Combustion presents a massive execution test for enemy teams looking to trade efficiently into setups. It might seem like Combustion is balanced and held in check by its 2 minute cooldown, but as you know, it can be reset by selecting certain talents like Pyrokinesis and Kindling. The Mage Covenant ability shifting power further reduces Combustion's cooldown. It's possible to almost have the cooldown of Combustion if you play things right. And when you combine this with an Outlaw Rogue who also has variable cooldowns, it is easy to see why Outlaw RMP is dominating the top of the ladder. And now with an array of defensive conduits such as Diverted Energy and Tempest Barrier, and the shift in popularity from Shimmer to the talent Blazing Soul, Mages are tankier than ever. Ever. This shift in popularity was prompted by the new trinket added in 9.2, Cosmic Gladiator's Echoing Resolve. The biggest drawback of this trinket is that it increases the duration of CC on its user by 25%, including stuns, which could easily spell disaster if hit by an 8 second kidney, for example. However, a mage can simply blink out of any stun. This eliminates the primary drawback of Cosmic Gladiator's Echoing Resolve, and not only that, but when a fire mage blinks, Blazing Soul projects a blazing barrier around you. It's easy to see why Shimmer has gone out of fashion in favor of Blazing Soul. With the conduit flow of time, Blink's cooldown is reduced to 11 seconds, enabling a level of survivability Fire Mages haven't experienced before. In fact, Blazing Soul was so good that it actually got hit by a hotfix nerf in order to bring its power down. But even after this nerf, Fire Mage defense continues to carry in Arena, where it is a difficult kill target for virtually every team. And just like with Rogue, Fire Mages have a solid alternative with Frost in the event that it gets completely gutted. Speaking of Frost Mages, their popularity has soared in 9.2 thanks to the introduction of double legendaries as well as the addition of Cosmic Gladiator's Echoing Resolve. Frost Mages abuse this trinket just as well as Fire Mages, protecting them from interrupts during their insane Deathborn cooldown. The way Deathborn functions has made it one of the most feared cooldowns in the entire game. When combined with the Slick Ice Legendary and the Necrolord Legendary Death's Fathom, Frost Mages morph into a nuclear level threat as they stand completely still, firing off Frostbolt after Frostbolt until your team's health bars reach below zero. Picture this, a mage presses Deathborn, increasing their damage by 15% and transforming Frostbolt into a cleave ability, echoing its damage to two nearby enemies. With the Slick Ice Legendary and the mage casting Icy Veins, Frostbolt reduces subsequent cast times by 2% and increases their damage by 2%, stacking up to a 20% reduction in cast time and a 20% increase in damage. Death's Fathom further enhances this interaction by increasing spell damage by 1% for every enemy hit by Frostbolt, while Deathborn is active and Remember, the mage's frostbolts are cleaving. This means that each frostbolt can grant up to 3% increased spell damage per cast, on top of the slick ice buff and the 15% deathborn buff. Just insane. With all these factors, the frost mage is casting up to 20% faster, and every cast of frostbolt just makes them more and more deadly. On top of this, frost mages come equipped with a plethora of slows, roots, and not to mention their infamous polymorph. They can also cast ice block twice and have access to blink to escape life threatening stuns. This positions them as a tanky and deadly caster alongside their hotter counterpart. The popularity of Frost Mage is also partly due to their excellent synergy with another top tier class we recommend you main, Destruction Warlocks. Destrolocks are back! We all know how powerful they were in battle for Azeroth, and now they are here to assert their dominance once again. With the new tier set and trinkets introduced in 9.2, Destrolocks have risen back to the top and are looking like they are here to stay. To explain why Destrolocks have returned to their rightful throne, let's ask a simple question. What have been the weaknesses of Destro Warlocks up until 9.2? 
If you answered lockdowns and interrupts, you are correct. But now, these are both easily avoided by the new trinket Cosmic Gladiator's Echoing Resolve. Warlocks being able to use their key defensives Dark Pact, a huge shield, and Unending Resolve, a 40% damage reduction, while stunned, allows them to take advantage of this new trinket in a way only mages can imitate. This new trinket allows them access to an aura mastery without the trade-off of dying and stuns. This enables them to cast uninterruptible chaos bolts and fears and transforms them into a high-pressure, sustained damage, top-tier threat. Speaking of Chaos Bolt, I know many of you shiver hearing that spell name as you have likely been one-shot by it sometime this season. You can thank Warlock's two-set bonus for that. For every 10 soul shards a Warlock spends, they are granted a free instant Chaos Bolt. This enables them to essentially cast a double Chaos Bolt by following their initial cast with this instant second cast. With their go-to legendary, casting Chaos Bolt empowers the damage of the next Chaos Bolt by 25%. This translates to their instant follow-up, Chaos Bolt, being incredibly strong and seemingly coming out of nowhere. Warlock's 4 set summons an Infernal after consuming the instant Chaos Bolt granted by the 2 set. This leads to even more damage output combined with the 1.5 second stun of an Infernal being summoned. But Warlocks aren't just pure damage, they never have been. Where they really shine is their durability. Talents like Demon Armor increase a Warlock's max health by 10% and their armor by 160% and can be combined with Dark Pact and Unending Resolve. But Warlocks also have several self-peel options in the form of Mortal Coil, Shadow Fury, and Fear. These defensive options grant them survivability that goes unmatched by other casters. A big part of their durability that we haven't described yet is their mobility. Warlocks have access to Demonic Gateway and Demonic Circle Teleport, two great versatile mobility cooldowns which can get them out of tricky situations. But what if you don't want to main a caster? What if healing's more your style? Look no further because these next two powerhouses are definitely healers worth maining. Throughout Shadowlands, Holy Paladins have bounced back and forth in terms of relevancy and strength, but in 9.2 they have risen back to the top. Holy Paladins possess a toolkit of amazing cooldowns, crowd control, as well as an abundance of healing throughput. It is easy to see why they are one of the best specs to main. Let's start by discussing what's fresh, their tier set, and how they utilize double legendaries. With 9.2, most high-ranked Holy Paladins that we spoke to have dropped Kyrian in favor of Necrolord. This is because the Necrolord Covenant synergizes insanely well with their two-set bonus and their access to the Necrolord Legendary. This combination works so well because whenever the Paladin casts their Necrolord ability, called Vanquisher's Hammer, their next Word of Glory heal is increased by 25% and automatically triggers Light of Dawn. In addition, their Necrolord Legendary, Duty Bound Gap, grants Vanquisher's Hammer two charges and empowers an additional cast of Word of Glory, which triggers another Light of Dawn. This ties in perfectly to their two-set bonus, Dawn Will Come. Every 30 seconds, Dawn Will Come causes Word of Glory to empower Light of Dawn, making it heal 50% more and cast twice. If everything lines up, this equates to six Light of Dawn activations in under 30 seconds. All of these spells are either instant cast or automatically triggered, so the Paladin's heals are uninterruptible. In a meta with mages, warlocks, and other ranged kick threats, uninterruptible heals are incredibly valuable. On top of that, Paladins have a toolkit that is great at responding to the insane amount of burst damage that this patch has to offer. With cooldown like Blessing of Sacrifice, Blessing of Protection, as well as two CC breaks with Divine Shield and their Medallion. It's easy to see why Holy Paladins have risen up a couple of tiers this season. Not only do Paladins have an insane amount of healing throughput with their tier set bonus, they also have one of the most powerful reactive healing cooldowns in the game, Avenging Wrath. This spell can be used in response to enemy cooldowns in order to keep up with the insane amount of damage that can come from them. This cooldown also gets reduced by the Paladin's 4 set bonus by causing each target hit by Light of Dawn to have a 50% chance to reduce the remaining cooldown of Avenging Wrath by 2 seconds. Not only does Avenging Wrath increase the healing a Paladin does, but it also increases their damage. And Paladin damage is no joke, with Vanquisher's Hammer, Hammer of Wrath, and their big damn judges. They can keep their team's health bars up and help take their opponent's health bar down. So, Holy Paladins have healing, damage, and great defensive cooldowns. Are we missing anything? Oh, that's right, their utility. Holy Paladins have amazing utility they can bring to their team with spells like Blessing of Freedom to help with those pesky frost mages, as well as an array of CC spells depending on their talent choices. Whether it be Blinding Light, an AoE 6 second blind, Repentance, a casted 8 second incapacitate effect, or Fist of Justice, a 6 second stun that requires no talent investment. Paladins have everything that a healer needs and then some, but they aren't quite as strong as the final spec we'll take a look at, Holy Priests. 
Holy Priests have been running rampant in 9.2, leaving their mark across all arena brackets, whether it be 2v2, 3v3, or professional play. Make no mistake, Holy Priests are the dominant healer of the current patch. Before 9.2, Holy Priest was already in a good spot in the meta, but the changes they received in the most recent patch have buffed them to a godly level. Across the board, their healing was buffed by 10%, and their damage was buffed by 15%. Someone at Blizzard must really like playing Holy Priest for us to see numbers like that. With the addition of tier sets, it is unquestionable that Holy Priests possess one of the best tier sets in the game. Holy Priests in the past were kept in check by their huge heals having lengthier cooldowns, but with the addition of their two set bonus, that grants a 10 second cooldown reduction to their Holy Word affecting spells, such as Flash Heal. In addition, their four set buffs non-Holy Word spells by 40% following a Holy Word cast. This enables the Priest to deliver consistent healing even with their most important spells on cooldown. These new tier sets synergize well with already existing talents and conduits. PvP talents like Miracle Worker reduce the cooldown of Holy Word Serenity by 10%, as well as granting it two charges, which makes the two sets' cooldown reduction all the more effective as both bonuses stack. Conduits, such as Resonant Words, seem like they were designed with the four set in mind, as their effects are similar and they stack. Resonant Words buffs your next heal or flash heal by 84% when it follows a Holy Word cast. With the four set buffing a 40% increase to Holy Word affecting spells, this combines to equate to a 124% healing increase for your heal or flash heal. That is over double the healing. This 40% increase can also be applied to damaging spells such as Holy Fire or Smite, which can take enemies by surprise. With every DPS class having access to double legendaries and tier sets, damage is at an all-time high. Holy Priests are the perfect choice to offset this increase in damage threat, as they can come prepared with huge instant cast heals and insane cooldowns such as Guardian Spirit and Ray of Hope. Holy Priests can respond to any incoming threats and keep themselves and their team healthier than ever. Not only are Holy Priests great at keeping their teammates alive, but they're also the only class that can return after death through the use of Res Legendary, which has become much more popular in Season 3. This allows the Priests to Res themselves, which can force enemies into blowing lots of offensive CDs on you just to have you Res moments later. Holy Priests also possess unmatched utility amongst healers. Spells like Greater Fade, Holy Ward, and Shadow Word Death make them one of the hardest specs to lock down. You'd probably face down a Holy Priest before, hit them with CC, and thought you had them dead to rights, only to watch them cast Holy Ward and fade away. Holy Priests not only dodge CC well, but they also have really powerful options to CC enemies. Mind Control and Psychic Scream are versatile crowd control spells, which you can use in many different scenarios. Their third CC spell, which cannot be overlooked, is Chastise. This spell is a 30 yard instant cast incapacitate or stun depending on talents. It cannot be overstated just how good Chastise is for setting up CC chains or cross CC by the priest or their team. With all this in mind, Holy Priest is the best healer in 9.2 bar none due to their versatility and synergy with almost every class. Holy Priest can slot into incredibly powerful comps like RMP, MLP, or honestly any comp that you want to run in arenas. Holy Priests have unparalleled flexibility in terms of comps and covenants, and have cemented themselves as the best healer to main in 9.2. All right, you are now officially an expert on the best specs to main in 9.2. Let's end this with a recap and your own opinions on the meta. We've seen that rogues are really strong, along with fury warriors. These melee classes assert their strength through consistency, CD uptime, and tankiness. For ranged DPS, mages stay at the top of the charts, with fire mages surviving nerfs and frost mages experiencing new levels of success. Destro locks have also made a comeback, having their traditional survivability and damage greatly enhanced by 9.2 changes. The healers we discussed simply have it all. High burst healing, seemingly limitless defensive CDs, offensive power, and utility. Holy Priests are clearly the strongest, but Holy Paladins are making a case for themselves. But what we want to know is what you guys think. What specs do you think are the best to main in 9.2? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, we wanted to remind you about our rating gain guarantee at skillcap.com slash wow. If you'd like to learn more about PvP, we got over 600 videos to help you out, including class courses that show you how to play your spec, and hundreds of arena commentaries where pro players break down gameplay step by step. Joining today will also give you instant access to the premium section of our Discord, where our team of expert players can answer all of your PvP questions. $4.99 is all it takes to get access to all of our exclusive features and get the rating you've always wanted. So what are you waiting for? Check out skillcap.com slash wow. In closing, every class and spec we discussed here has greatly benefited from the introduction of tier sets, double legendaries, and new PvP trinkets. Some have benefited from all three and rocketed towards the top spots in the meta. 
Hopefully, these high-level recommendations could point you towards the next class you decide to main in your arena's journey, or help you understand the intricacies of class balance. As always, thanks for watching, see you soon.